In this video, we're going to review oscillations for AP Physics 1. We're going to start with periodic motion. These are motion that repeats itself in regular time intervals. Simple harmonic motion is a special type of periodic motion where the restoring force is directly proportional to its displacement from the equilibrium. You'll notice a negative sign here because the restoring force and the displacement will be in opposite directions. Examples of simple harmonic motion include horizontal springs, vertical springs, and simple pendulums. Now we're going to take a look at some terms that you'll hear when we talk about oscillations. The first uh, we'll look at is equilibrium. This is the location where the net force equals zero. The amplitude is the maximum displacement. Uh, here we have a horizontal spring. Here is the equilibrium. The net force is zero. We pull it to the right. Here is the amplitude. When we let go, it's going to start moving to the left. And then on the other end, there's also an amplitude on this side as well. When you pull it to the right, there will be a force pulling it back towards the equilibrium, and we call this the restoring force. The more I pull it to the right, the greater that restoring force is. Here I have a vertical spring. Here's an unstretched vertical spring. I put some mass on it, and it's going to stretch the spring a little bit. There's a downward gravitational force and an upward spring force. The spring stretches until these forces balance. That is when the net force is zero, and this defines the new equilibrium position. If I pull it down, there will be a net force up. If it goes above the equilibrium position, there will be a net force down. The net force is the restoring force, and the further away you pull from the equilibrium, the greater the restoring force. Here is a simple pendulum, and I'm going to pull the pendulum to the left here, and this also has a restoring force. Um, that's going to come from one of the components of Fg, specifically Fg sine theta. And uh, this restoring force is uh, proportional to the angular displacement. You'll notice there's a negative because as you pull this pendulum to the left here, uh, there's going to be a restoring force to the right, so it's in opposite directions. So we know that the restoring force and the displacement is related to each other, but how are they exactly related to each other? And that's uh, what Hooke's law answers. So here we have a horizontal spring. We pull it to the right. There's a restoring force to the left towards the equilibrium. And here is Hooke's law. So the spring force is equal to negative k times the displacement. This, uh, there's a negative in this equation because the restoring force is in the opposite direction of, this, of the displacement. The k is the spring constant. This tells us the stiffness of the spring. So the more stiff the spring is, the greater the spring constant. The unit for the spring constant is newtons per meter. Here is a force versus displacement graph. On this type of graph, the slope represents the spring constant, which is k. The area under the curve represents the energy stored in the spring. Now we're going to dig a little bit deeper here. Since the net force equals ma, we can say that ma equals negative k times the displacement, or delta x. This tells us that the acceleration is proportional and opposite to the displacement. So I say pull this uh, block to the right. Um, as I increase that displacement, that increases the restoring force. And also it's going to, when I let it go, it's going to increase that acceleration as well. Now we're going to take a look at some quantities we can measure about oscillations. So the first is a period. Period is the time to complete one cycle. The unit for period is seconds. Um, I like to think of it as seconds per cycle. It's telling you how many seconds it takes to complete one cycle. The symbol for period is capital T. Next is frequency. This is the number of cycles per unit time. The unit for this is hertz. I like to think of it as cycles per second. It's telling you how many cycles there are for each second. Period and frequency are inversely related. We can say frequency is equal to 1 over the period, or period is equal to 1 over the frequency. The period for a spring is equal to 2 pi square root the mass divided by the spring constant. The period for a pendulum can be calculated uh, by taking 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by g, the gravitational field strength. Note that the amplitude doesn't affect the period, so you do not see the amplitude in the period equation. Now we're going to use 
equations to represent the displacement of an object in simple harmonic motion. And we've got two equations. The first is x is equal to a cosine parentheses 2 pi ft. The second one is x is equal to a sine parentheses 2 pi ft. If you know the amplitude, the frequency, and the time, you can calculate the position of the object in simple harmonic motion. Whether you use the equation on the left or on the right depends on the initial condition. At time zero, are you at the equilibrium or are you at the amplitude? Another way to represent the position of the object in simple harmonic motion is through uh, motion graphs. So take a look at this position for time graph. We're starting at x equals zero at time zero. And uh, as, uh, as you look at this graph, notice that the slope of the position versus time graph represents the velocity and the slope of the velocity versus time graph represents the acceleration. Also, we can represent time with reference to its period. So one complete wave, the time to make one complete wave is called the period. Um, half of that, we can call that t over 2. Now, we're going to, we have some diagrams here, which I'm going to use to match up to this position graph. So at time equals 0, uh, the location is 0. So that is right here at the equilibrium. And then the object moves towards the amplitude. And that would be represented by, by this uh, diagram right here. And this occurs when the time is uh, one fourth of the period. And then it's going to come back to the equilibrium. I didn't draw that here. But then it's going to keep going to the negative amplitude, which is right here. And this will occur when the t, the time is equal to three fourths of the period. Now we're going to take a look at energy in oscillations. Uh, we're also going to look at energy bar charts to help us uh, keep track of the energy. Here I have a horizontal spring. I did not draw the spring. I just have the object just to make it a little bit cleaner. So we have an object. We let it go. It's going to move to the left, past equilibrium. It's going to start slowing down, reaches the amplitude on the left-hand side, and then it's going to start speeding up to the right-hand side. Once it reaches the equilibrium, it's going to slow down, and then it's going to, for an instance, stop at the amplitude on the positive side, and then it's going to go move, start to move back to the left. Here is the energy chart to represent the energy of the system. So we start with uh, potential energy. Uh, we only have potential energy because it's not moving at this instant. And then as it moves towards the equilibrium, it's going to speed up. And at the equilibrium, the spring is not stretched, so there's no potential energy. There's only kinetic energy. Once it gets to the negative amplitude, it's going to have only uh, potential energy because the spring is now compressed and then it's going to start moving to the right when it gets to equilibrium it's going to have only kinetic energy and then when it gets to the positive amplitude again it's going to have only potential energy no kinetic because it's not moving for that instant now if it's in between the equilibrium and amplitude you can have some potential energy and some kinetic energy uh, the total energy is the potential plus kinetic. The equation for kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv squared. The equation for uh, elastic or spring potential energy is 1 over 2 kx squared, sometimes also referred to as the elastic potential energy. At x equals 0, so this is at the equilibrium. The total energy, mechanical energy here, is going to be 1 over 2 mv squared because it, it, the spring is not stretched. Uh, there's no restoring force here. It's uh, at its equilibrium. At x equals a, so that's when you're pulling all the way to the right at the furthest uh, displacement uh, at the right or where it's compressed all the way to the left, the total mechanical energy is going to just be the potential energy, which is 1 over 2 kA squared. A is the amplitude, and um, the equation is x, but the amplitude is the maximum displacement. If there's no energy going into or out of our system, then the total mechanical energy will stay the same. And uh, here is our equation for the total mechanical energy of an oscillating system. We have the potential energy here, and we have the kinetic energy here. Even though the potential energy could decrease, the kinetic energy will increase such that the total amount will stay the same. 
And here's a chart to kind of illustrate this idea as a mass on a spring is moving back and forth on a horizontal surface. As it moves towards the equilibrium, the kinetic energy increases. However, the potential energy decreases. As it continues to the positive amplitude, the kinetic energy decreases, but the potential energy increases such that the total amount of energy stays the same. So the at where you have the maximum kinetic energy, which is at this location, notice you have the uh, minimum potential energy here, okay? And where you have the minimum kinetic energy over here, you have the maximum potential energy.